Hey guys, so today we are going to be talking about a really, really messed up case. So, your discretion is advised. I'm giving you a warning in advance because this one is a little, it's a little messed up. So, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Marcus Wesson case and uh, let's get on into it, guys. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to let everybody know I'll probably be looking down at my phone a lot because I have a lot written about this. So I kind of want to cover everything that I wrote about. So if I'm looking a little off camera, this is why. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get into the case. Marcus DeLeon Weston was born on August 22nd, 1946 in Kansas. His parents were Benjamin and Carrie Weston. He was the oldest of four children. When it came to religion, there was no family more devoted to the Seventh-day Adventist church than the Weston family. So pretty much in his town of Kansas, his family was the one that was known pretty much all throughout for being like the most devoted. Uh, yeah, so he was always claiming that his mother was really, really abusive and she was all, always doing it in the name of the Lord when it came to the abuse of him and his five or four siblings. Marcus's home life was anything but nostalgic. Other than having a mother whose only goal and concern in life is the church, his father was a mean old drunk who took it out on the kids constantly. Between the religious fanatic mother and the abusive alcoholic father, Marcus truly didn't know what peace was, which is an even more twisted way about things because if you think about it, like he never even knew what being a good person was because ooh, he did not have very good examples. Eventually he moved out and when Marcus was in high school he dropped out and joined the army serving as a medical care provider but was given an honorable discharge in the early 70s. While in the army not much is known during that era of his life but it always makes me wonder if that's where his batshit and like sinister tendencies started to show up because if you think about it you have more access to things when you're in the army than you would as a civilian. You know, you're dealing with guns every day, explosives, and da-da-da-da, and him being a med medical care provider, he had access to different kind of things, like medicines, and like syringes, and like scalpels, and all this other weird stuff. So maybe it got his mind racing when it came to what would happen later on down the line. After he got out of the army, he met Rosemary Solaro and quickly moved in with her. I'm talking within hours did they move in together. Rosemary was already a mother of eight when she met Wesson, however, this did not deter him. In fact, he seemed thrilled, claiming they needed a shepherd. It wasn't long before Rosemary and Wesson had a son of their own. In 1971, Rosemary gave birth to Marcus's first child. Only a couple of years later in 1974 is when he started abusing her daughter Elizabeth, who was eight at the time. <sighs> so disgusting. Um... What was so mind-boggling of it all was the fact that Rosemary was completely fine with what was happening to her daughter. She even looked at it as a blessing from God. That is like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what is wrong with you? Ay, 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 ay. So when Elizabeth turned 15, she was married off to Wesson by her own mother, nonetheless. And then only four months later, she gave birth to her first child. She would give birth about 10 more times to 10 kids. So to say the least, get this dude the hell away from children, especially his own. Mind-blowingly enough, Elizabeth's older sister left her seven children in the care of Elizabeth and Marcus. Because she thought leaving her kids there with them would give them a better chance at normalcy. Little did she know of the horrors that would take place in the house afterwards. Marcus was never able to hold down a job and consistently lived off welfare check. He made his adult children work and give them absolutely all of their money. So in 1989, Marcus was convicted of welfare fraud and perjury. Since he was doing all of those terrible things with his money, Mind you, the money he forcibly took from those kids, the adult kids who were working their butts off at the time. They had to live in rundown shacks, boats, and vacant houses. But if you think about it, she was around when he was doing all those things to Elizabeth, the older sister. So maybe she should have had an idea of, you know, what she was bringing those kids into. But then again, if you think about it, that's all they knew. 
um, which is even more of a twisted fate because you think you're doing the right thing, but in the end, you're, you're really not. In the House of Horrors, Marcus was always extremely abusive to Elizabeth and all the other children who lived there. He excluded Elizabeth from the children's upbringing. He decided on homeschooling all of the kids, taught them all of his own handwritten Bible uh, teachings, and solely focused on Jesus Christ and being a vampire. He became fascinated with David Koresh. During the siege of Waco in Texas in 1993, he made his family into his own personal cult. He described himself as Jesus Christ and the police officers as Satan. When the family watched the television coverage of the Branch Davidian siege, Mr. Weston told the children that this is how the world is attacking God's people. This man is just like me. He is making children from the Lord. That's what we all should be doing. This motherfucker really said that's what we all should be doing, making children for the Lord. Had me stuttering over here. Ew. Where the hell am I? Where the hell am I? He taught the children that he was God and God only, and that they had to refer to him as master or Lord. He taught the children from a young age that they must be prepared for Armageddon, and that all the girls who lived under that roof were destined to become his wives, and that their daughters would have the same fate as well. The girls were not allowed to talk to their mother or their siblings. He really had it out for the kids when it came to his anger and taking his frustrations out on them. Marcus only sexually abused the girls, and it started when they were eight years old, just as it had happened to their mother and aunt. Each of the five girls became pregnant as a result of his disgusting desires and bizarre teachings. I need a coffee for this. Yikes. What started the outcome of that fateful day was Marcus had intending on relocating the whole family to Washington State, where Marcus's parents lived thinking he would be able to have his parents take care of them and all his financial worries and woes. So he's going over there thinking that his parents are gonna be like saviors and da 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 da. Like, bro, they're just as crazy as you. And uh, I'm pretty sure the last thing they wanna do at probably whatever the hell age they are, cause you looked old as shit when you got arrested. I'm sure they're super old as well. They do not wanna deal with that. And also, yikes. But that's neither here nor there. On the day of March 12, 2004, multiple extended family members of Marcus, along with two nieces who rebelled against him, arrived to the family compound, demanding the release of their children. When the police arrived to the scene, it was portrayed to them as a child custody issue. When they started talking to the family members who were demanding the kids back, they were very upset, they were being erratic, and when smooth-talking Marcus opened the door, he seemed very sane, calm, and no issue when it came to them entering the house and to see slash get the kids. But the shady person Marcus was shined brightly on that day. Only moments later, as he went back inside, he started gathering up the family and each of them were shot in the left eye. Putting them in an antique coffin, he, excuse me, putting them in antique coffins, he made them purchase a while back, always telling the family that they will always die together. Outside the house, shots were being heard by extended family members who shut up to get the children. Strangely enough, the cops had the audacity to say they never heard any shots go off, but the family and the police were all standing in the same area. I'm pretty sure being law enforcement that when a problem happens, you try to separate the two parties and, you know, most of the cops are over here with one party and some are over there at the other. My question is, how did the family only hear the shots, but not the police who, you know, not some of the police who were standing in that area? Makes absolutely no sense. <sighs> Many of them being children, the police found the room of the bodies with the antique coffins inside. The kids who were not inside the home at the time are the only survivors. The victims are... Sabrina April Wesson, age 25, Elizabeth Brial Kiana Wesson, age 17, Eliabel Carrie Wesson, age 8, Avi Dominic Wesson, age 7, Jonathan St. Charles Wesson, age 7, Ethan St. Laurent Wesson, age 4, Marcy St. Christopher Wesson, age 1, Java St. Vladimir B. Wesson, age 1, Sedona Vlaria Wesson, age 1. He was arrested. It was a scene and it became a standoff and all this other crazy shit happened so let's go ahead and dive in it because my recap right here ain't doing it 
Marcus surrenders and is arrested after a two hour standoff. All the family members who showed up that day were heard screaming, crying, and being distraught at the news. Some relatives of the dead collapsed near the house and at least one woman was taken away by ambulance. Understandably so, her whole family was taken away. Several neighbors reported hearing gunshots. Okay, back to what I just said. How did neighbors who were far away from the scene hear that? But the police who were on site did not, I just, Make it make sense, really, that's all I'm asking. Jesus. <sighs> Another woman said that they had left their children in Weston's custody. Authorities had soon figured out later on. As soon as Marcus enters the cop car, he started telling his versions of events that happened in that house. Also, what was crazy about this too, is he was trying to like preach to the cops that she was the one who wasn't gonna let the kids leave and da 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 and all this other stuff. Like, are you joking me? No. Her DNA was found on the gun, and it was ever so conveniently left on top of her body in a perfect position. Even though she apparently was the one who committed suicide with the same gun that the rest of the family was slain by, the jury did not play into the lies he was telling on the stand and about the case. The jury did not convict him of firing the fatal shots that ended the family's lives, but he was convicted of murder in the first degree. The jury were actually terrified to be in the same room with Weston. His full conviction is nine counts of first degree murder. Sorry, not even one, it was nine. Mm. He was also found guilty on 14 counts of forceful rape and sexual molestation of seven of his daughters and nieces. Weston was sentenced to death on June 27, 2005 and is currently in San Quentin prison. We're gonna get into my opinions and some little tidbits about the case, so. In my opinion, I have two theories on what happened inside that house on that tragic day. My first theory is that he actually fired every single shot to each one of those victims, wiped the gun clean of any of his DNA, and killed Sabrina last to make it seem like she had supposedly shot herself last and then shot everyone. And that's why she was the one who was pretty much alive last during the whole thing but if you ask but if you ask me the way the gun was positioned on her body is super fishy so so i'm inserting my opinion here my second one is marcus made her kill the kids who were not hers so little did we know that as he's trying to portray all this like bullshit about her like she's not gonna let the kids leave and da da da, da she's literally being held hostage inside of that house with her own son so once again, make it make sense. Oh, okay. I hate, I hate, like, dude, like, just, it's so crazy. Like, it's just absolutely disgusting. The same child who was in that house with her, that was her son, was also Marcus's son and grandson. No, 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 no. The rest of my theory, the reason why she was killed last or whatever is because, you know, he was telling her, hey, if you kill all the kids that aren't yours, you know, we're, you're going to make it out, you and your son, and everything's going to be fine. Well, he completely lied to her and made her kill her son. And, you know, she was so distraught on what she did and how he lied to her that, you know, she ended her own life because of the things that she just did. So... Yeah, either way, super crazy. Those are just opinions, you know, I'm not a CSI crime investigator person or a, like lawyer or whatever, but I just think like that's a little weird to me if you ask me, but uh, leave your own opinions and tell me what you guys think because I am so dying to know. I've only seen a couple videos on this case and man, I didn't know anything about it. So please leave your opinions, your theories and all that other stuff. We are not done yet. We are gonna get into some good news. I wanted to end this on a super good note because this case was just, is a lot. You know what I mean? There's so many twists and turns and weird things going on. So let's end it with some great news about the kids who did survive the aftermath that happened on that house. 
During the trial, their surviving children defended their father, saying that he was a loving dad who would never do anything like this. Rosa Solario had two of her children killed that day, and she still voiced her support for Marcus. She even wore the necklace that he gave her as a wedding present on the stand. Excuse me? What about your kids? Like, ew. But you know, she's in grief, who am I to say anything? But still, um, I would not be repping anything from the person that um, was a part of ending my kid's life and the rest of my family. So that's a no for me. During an ABC interview, she kept giving excuse after excuse when it came to what happened in that house, which is pretty sad, honestly, because if that's the case, like, you should just take accountability and all that stuff. Like, I have read later on down the line, like, she figured out, like, how messed up things were because, like I said earlier, like, a lot of those kids, that's all they knew. So they didn't know any different, as messed up as it was, and just, yeah, so. And recently, Mr. Gavin Nunu, uh, the governor of California, jackass, um, canceled the death row laws in California. So our boy Marcus Wesson is just pretty much sitting there, chilling, doing his thing, you know what I mean? And everyone has their own opinions on the death penalty and you know everyone is entitled to him. But I just think of all the things that those kids went through that is super unjust for that dude just to be sitting there, getting meals fed to him every day, getting all tucked in. I'm sure he doesn't have it easy, you know, in prison, but he really shouldn't have it easy, but honestly, I really, uh, yeah, I really hope he gets his when it comes to the justification for those kids, and yeah, so sorry, rant over. <laughs> Anyways, back into the beautiful news as I was saying, sorry I got a little triggered. Later on, the surviving kids realized the trauma that they had suffered by the hands of their father and how bad it really was, and that they were robbed of their childhood by him. Many of the surviving children went on to live great lives in which they all deserve and some. Adrian is the second oldest and he's a personal trainer in Cali, so you know, he's making people like, you know, strong and healthy and that's awesome. Serafino is another son that is a security guard, but he dreams on becoming a police officer. His daughter Gypsy ended up graduating from Fresno Pacific University with a bachelor's degree in business. She graduated at 27. Gypsy had never been inside of a classroom before, so she like really had to start from the bottom up because like we said before in the video, her father was teaching her crazy shit about Bible verses and being a vampire and like all this like wacky stuff about just nonsense. So she really didn't learn anything, but when she went back to school, she was 19, so she really had to start from the bottom up and she graduated when she was 27, which is awesome. So if you guys watch that ABC interview, that's literally the year she's graduating. So that's like, that's super awesome. Like, Little, little, little Easter egg you guys can think about when you watch the, the actual interview and stuff like that. I'll make sure I link it below and everything. And uh, all my other sources as well. Also, I want to make sure that we pay respect and tribute to those nine victims who lost their lives. Because yes, this is a YouTube video, but this is still their lives and their experience and what they've been through. So, rest in peace to all those angels and I hope they are finally at peace because sadly they didn't know it in life and I hope they get that in the afterlife. <sighs> Man, just makes me like my heart just beat really fast every time I talk about it because I just, you know, the cases always get you, that's for sure. But I will make sure I will leave all my sources guys if you want to check out the interviews. There's also a girl who I watched a while back before I started doing any of the video stuff and oh my gosh she actually went to the vacant lot where his house is actually at and there's some like just really good footage in there and her video is super amazing so i'll make sure i link that down as well and she also touches on things that you know i didn't know till i watched her video again later on and i was like oh snap i think i gotta miss that so go ahead check her video out after this and uh yeah make sure to Treat everyone equal, like the shirt says. <laughs> Alright guys, see you later my spooky queens and kings.